Hi, it's me, your girlfriend slash boyfriend slash day friend's favorite content creator. And uh, it's summertime, baby. So sun's out, guns out. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I just want to talk a little bit about some news Two, two news. You guys get two news for the price of one video. Very cheap, especially in this economy. First bit of news. Jason Schreier has released a in-depth article talking about why Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League didn't do too well. And contrary to a lot of people's opinions in one particular subsection, it had nothing to do with DEI or ESG or anything of the kind. It, it was simply mismanagement as, as it is most of the time. It's super fucking boring. I know people would love to be like, actually they were forced because Sweet Baby Inc. has their claws on everything and they're the reason why the games do bad. But like I've said a bajillion times, consulting companies don't have that kind of power. They are contractors. The companies hire them and then they ask for their advice and then it's up to the company to then take that advice. They don't have to do it. They're not forced to do it. They just pay them essentially for some additional help and or their opinions. That's it. And the article goes over, you know, just that, what actually happened. And again, it's it's something that if you're familiar with game development, especially nowadays, it's a story you've heard a thousand times. A bunch of executives who have no idea what things actually work, see something that they think they can make a billion dollars off of, and then just go full bore into it because other people have made billions of dollars off of it. The push for it to be a live service, like uh, all those things that people didn't like about it, they were, that's the reason, that's why I didn't do well. But I wanted to talk about that because even when given evidence of this is actually why this game did not work, those people are still like, no, you're wrong. <laughs> you're wrong. You're part of a cult, actually. It, it's because of Sweet Baby Inc. They're the reason why. They're the reason for the backlash. Even though if you talk to anyone outside the internet, they have no fucking idea what Sweet Baby Inc. is. If I asked them, what they know about SBI, they'd be like, what like company is that? They'd have no idea. Again, going to repeat myself a little bit here. The reason why the game didn't do well overall was mismanagement. That's that's what it is. That's always really, really comes down to. Uh, they had the idea that things would just coalesce at the end. You know, that good old rock steady energy, which is the same thing that Bioware thought would happen with Anthem and also Mass Effect Andromeda. Just that the Bioware magic, the blank studio magic, is just gonna happen. And it doesn't just happen because that's not how games are made. It's not just things coming together at the very last minute. It's people who have good management, who have good planning, who have a clear vision, you know, who are consistent with their vision, who aren't changing things up, you know, every so often, every couple of months, and yet the deadlines are still the same deadlines. Like it's nothing like that. But if you want to get more detailed, you can, I'll link the entire thing. You can read it for yourself, but I just wanted to start off with that because can we stop now with the conspiracy theories? It's again, it's super boring. It's just people who don't know how to manage shit are managing shit and they don't understand the game industry. They don't understand the audience that they actually have, you know, uh, got, gathered for themselves. And that was the result. Again, Suicide Squad is Anthem. It's, it's, it's the same thing. And the backlash that came from this again, wasn't because of sweet baby ink. Like, no one even knew who the fuck they were. It was because people saw the first trailer and they were like, uh, oh, you're making it a live service game. The Arkham series, the games that are single player experiences starring Batman, you're making it a live service game. And then we saw it and we're like, we don't like this shit. And it looks bad. That was the backlash. That's why it was delayed. That's why they took down the trailer. That's why all that happened before people even knew who even worked on it. That was the backlash. Then some loser from Brazil was like, hey, Angry Bird is black and then made a whole website. I have a whole video on it. It's it's whatever. That's the real reason. Wait, hold on. Wait, I was editing this video and I came across this video from Cabrutus, the guy who started the whole DI detected. He's the reason the whole backlash, the uh, anger boat is black. Mm, he didn't fucking play God of War. Anyways, God of War Ragnarok's on PC and he is upset about this. And I need you guys to watch this because holy shit. Of course I can. Dude. Oops. Like Oops. I'm sorry. Ah, uh, yes. Why creator says, oh, actually I should, I should fix this. I just realized I forgot you, baby. 
Yes, that's more like it. Let me update the review. And let's check this the store page again. Yes, involved with Sweet Baby Ink. And if you click here, yes, it opens up the DI Detective website. That was a very that was a very easy one because well like I told you guys it, it was already well known that Sweet Baby Ink was involved uh, in this project. And yeah, that's it. And hey, if you support what I do and you want to see the didetected.com platform growing, please consider supporting me over the Buy Me A Coffee. Uh, I have just created the membership programs over there. Uh, these tiers uh, were made after my followers' uh, feedback. No, the value is on everything. It's all based on, on my followers' feedback. And of course, if you don't want to become a member, if you don't want to subscribe to a monthly fee, you can, of course, make a on-time donation in the same place. Uh, buy me a coffee slash Kaburus. I'll leave the links. Uh. The dude is just plugging his own two hundred dollars to be. If you look closely at the membership tiers, you know they usually be like, you get this, this, and this. Everything just says you're a great supporter. You're a good supporter. You're the best supporter. And the whole video, he's just like, well, um, it's well known that they work at Sweep Baby Ink, therefore the game is trash and bad. Like, oh, it's it's so obvious, but yeah. I just wanted to put this in here because uh, this is the guy. This is the guy that you people are like saying is going to save you $200 a month for this. I'm giving you guys this shit for free. $200 a month to run a website. That's just him bitching about the games to woke $200. Oh my God. All right. Back to the video. Now, going on to the second news, because remember, I told you it's a two for one deal. If you like deals, follow your boy. Oh, uh, Summer Game Fest starting officially tomorrow and some information is coming out. Not so much about the games being shown or what's not being shown, although he does tell us to tamper our expectations. Uh, no, what's being talked about now are the pricing, particularly if you are a developer, because according to Kotaku's report, and corroborated by other outlets. It's pretty expensive to actually like have your shit in Summer Games Fest. If you have a one minute trailer, it's going to cost you $250,000 for a minute, a minute trailer. Now I ask you as gamers, what we are, when is the last time an unknown game, not from a big publisher, not from someone who has established track record, when is the last time a minute trailer got you into something? Can you even remember? Can you even remember? So like, to give you an example, the sizzle reel they put together, let's say people, you know, paid for that. You paid $250,000 per game, per, per game to be in that trailer. So if it was like a two minute trailer, I don't even know if they even do by the second, cause if you're in there for like 10 seconds, what's that? But 250 minimum and they said that it was the same pricing for the game awards to have your game being shown there too of course i'm sure certain companies didn't have to worry about that like the big ones i'm sure kojima with his 30 minute long presentation um was probably comped to be completely honest jeff loves kojima but this goes to show like a lot of the issues in the gaming industry right things are crazily expensive now i'm not gonna completely knock on jeff he has a whole thing to run and you know i don't know the exact financials of that i don't know if he makes a profit of this or whatever i don't know what i do know though is if we're going to frame this as something that's good for indie developers then maybe there should be like an indie developer price like maybe the big boys the established ones they pay the 250 but like an indie developer who wants to get their game out there maybe like 10k you know what i mean like Maybe 10K. I feel like there should be, maybe they still have to pay, but it should be reasonable. Like something that a group of like 10, 20 people could come up with 10K, but $250,000 minimum. That is the budget of actually some of these developer games, probably even more than their budget. I, ugh, I don't know, man. Like, again, I'm an outsider on this. I have the same information you guys have or same access to it, but I just feel like there should be a discount for the smaller companies, especially if they're trying to break into the industry. 
And I know, yes, there's also like the data developers and the spotlights for the showcases. But like, are they paying for that? Are they paying a shit ton of money for that? Is it something where it's like because people paid for the tickets that you can offset the cost? They're like, I don't know. I feel like there's ways to make it attainable for more people. But that's all we wanted to talk about. The fact that, yes, uh, Suicide Squad did bad because it was just a bad game. You know, bad games happen. It's uh, unfortunate, but I, there was no big conspiracy theory behind that. And money. <laughs> money in video games. But I do hope Jeff Keighley acknowledges the massive amount of layoffs that have been happening uh, in the game industry. Because he is, whether you like him or not, he is a voice in the industry. I mean, hell, he owns the, the, the showcases. He killed E3. There's no E3. It's, gum, it's summer game. By the way, Jeff, I know you're watching this. Um, why is it summer game fest? Why is it not summer games? Like, it's it's more than one game, Jeff. Just just do the summer. It was it's like summer games taken. So you have to do summer game fest because it's still SGF, but one makes more sense. Like it doesn't. Like if it was like I guess like game expo, even though because still games. Yeah. E3 was, yeah, 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 yeah. It's, I don't know. Jeff, just make it Summer Games Fest. I don't know. I don't get it. But anyways, what are you guys looking forward to uh, for this Summer's Game Fest? And if you are going to IGN Live, I'll be there on Saturday in case you guys want to, I don't know, yell at me in person. But um, yeah, tell me what you're looking forward to. What game you're looking forward to? By the way, you're not going to get Silk Song or Bloodborne 2. Just just, just know that. Know that and accept it. Okay? So no Bloodborne 2. No Silk Song. But yes, leave a comment. Tell me what game you are excited to see. Or just excited about in general. You know? Let's have some positivity going on here. Also, like, comment, share, subscribe. Um, force your friends to do it. Share the videos. Uh, spam them with it. If not this one, maybe... This one, somewhere here. Let's say, actually say here, I'll put it here. Maybe this video, I like this video. It's best viewer, it's best for viewers. So I don't know what the algorithm thinks is best for the viewer, but you tell me what video they suggested. And then I'll let you know if it's a good video or not. If it's my video, which it should be, then it's gonna be a good video. All right, bye.